Hello. Uh, in our previous video, <coughs> we used the your backup uh, client server and client uh, to send to save an image to the server and then deploy it uh, to a blank machine or restore it uh, with the uh, restore CD to a blank machine. <coughs> but that was that when uh, the destination computer uh, the one that you are restoring to has either a DVD drive CD drive or a disk drive USB disk uh, and you can <coughs> work with it but what if you have a bare bone computer or the computer does not have a USB uh, uh, or CD or you don't have a uh, mean to burn the CD or DVD or uh, make a USB bootable you just have a computer that is <coughs> uh, you can connect to your network uh, that is <coughs> if you have a, if you have an, a server you can get the installation media from the server over the network wired or wireless and install an operating system onto your uh, blank new machine to do that we're gonna use the software It's the easiest one what I found it since has been discontinued named clone deploy it says here but if you can go to their website it says there and then they tell you that uh, source code has been shifted to github but it's just a source code it's uh, not the exe that we're looking for for that we you can go to SourceForge and get the download the software it's very easy I have already downloaded it um, I'm not gonna do it again uh, I uh, actually got to play with it a little bit perfected it so this video is not a trial and error and you see I've already ran the windows because I know it's going to be a long video so I don't want to waste uh, I wanted to save it any minute I could so let's get started with it um, in this scenario we're gonna download uh, install the software on this server you see it's the server then we're gonna use create a new blank virtual machine here and install the media uh, install uh, Windows uh, from this machine but before that we're gonna send this machine image to the server and then deploy it onto the blank one so let's do that again I have already downloaded the um, phone deploy here so I'm gonna just run it you can download it from over there so let's just run it install installation is pretty easy you just go through it it's gonna ask you for a password um, uh, this password is very important you need to remember what it is and <coughs> basically it has to uh, meet the new standards of uh, server so it has to have in uppercase and lowercase and numbers It's installing oh Where did I close I don't know oh it was the this one all right so when it uh, I thought it was done but uh, 
almost done finish you click finish and before we go and do the fun stuff we have to actually configure the DHCP server and I had already d installed the DHCP way back when I uh, created this machine uh, about a month and a half ago you see it's 156 day and usually they have 180 days so okay a month ago so uh, I cannot show you uh, how to install DHCP on this machine but I will make another video about that but normally you just have to click manage add role and feature go through and once you get to the selection um, here server role you click on DHCP and you next 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 and it gets installed so but right now we're gonna uh, configure DHCP so we have to click basically what we're going to do is we're gonna we want when these uh, that machine uh, the other machine uh, boots uh, through BXC uh, pixie it looks for a server to get assigned an IP address and that's what we're doing we're gonna uh, make this DHCP assigns IP address to any device that boots into PC and looks for a an IP address in a uh, installation source uh, server for that we have to click on right right click here new scope we can name it anything but since uh, the software name we can put the software name this is basically a saying is that okay this is your DIC server and it has what are the um, range of uh, addresses it should give out and <clears throat> we're gonna uh, we can give it like 10 15 20 addresses that range and it will give out for example we're gonna play with just one machine but in a real world scenario if uh, for example 10 machine go online at the same time looking for that so this server should be able to cater them all of them so if you can see our this is our IPv4 address for the server we can add that oh. look what happened if I put 195 because the server is 194 that that should work right 192.168.144 dot let's say 195.205 so it the server actually should give out 10 it should be able to handle 10 but you can put like up to 255 here so next and type the IP address range that you want to exclude so what is the IP address that you do not want to be um, in there uh, we can put 192.168.144.194 oh add so basically when we do that we try to exclude our server address from the list it says no it's not in the overall range so that's why we have to go back add 194 here now it will add so basically we told her, uh, the server that these are the range of address that you can get but exclude this one because that's server's own address and we can go <clears throat> so it's asking for the router IP address of the router basic norm is 192.168.0.1 or dot uh, 1.0 is something like that normally it's one, uh, 192.168.0.1 but we cannot put that the reason is that it's a virtual machine environment and even though it connects to the router outside of it but the router is not in in the virtual environment for that uh, we can run cmd ipconfig 
and we can get the default gateway basically this is we can use this one because this is the one that the, the default address out of this machine into the router so 192.168.144.193 all right and we can keep it same we don't have a server name or IP address this one is for the Google one I think it automatically picked up uh, from the IPv4 when uh, I configured the Ethernet uh, adapter so this is to make sure that uh, this server machine can connect to uh, internet if you remove this one you will see a yellow uh, icon here saying no network access no internet access so here it's asking for the win server we can put our <coughs> server ip address oh. we want to activate the scope now and you see this uh, blue icon right here it looks like that it is not active because it, there is not a green check mark what you have to do is right click on it right click on it deactivate and then it's red now we can go back and activate and you see the IPv4 turn to a green check mark just like here and it's activated there are a final there is a final step that is to configure it the last configuration that is um, now we configured it to give out the IP addresses but we haven't um, configured it for the machines when they boot into pixie boot what to look for like uh, this server is ready to give out the um, IP addresses but how it's gonna do it for that you have to right click on um, where is it? scope option and configure option go down to the different thing that you can uh, configure but we need to look for specifically 66 and 67 basically 66 says host uh, uh, boot server host name and this uses TFTP boot um, if you can see boot server host name TFTP so TFTP if you know FTP file transfer protocol it's uh, the same uh, it's not the same uh, sorry uh, I apologize it's not the same but the concept is same uh, it's uh, F FTP uses the TCP uh, transmission control protocol and that is basically verifying uh, e the data it sent that it reached its destination TFTP uses UDP user data uh, gram, uh, user data protocol and it does not uh, verify uh, the data that it sent um, is received it just sends the data out so, but uh, it, it was just a tech byte over here string value we have to use what is the host name basically when the machine boots into pixie boot um, it goes in the pixie boot uh, mode it looks for an IP address and um, ba and basically by entering that I our server IP address here we tell okay yeah if this is the IP address of the server that has the installation media and for this boot file name is always p x pixie boot dot zero it's not oh it's zero apply now you're done on the server side we can just uh, refresh it now let's create let's first off first of all let's go and run this machine and use its image send it over to 
uh, our server we can click connect start and you see the windows is uh, booting up we're not gonna log into the domain we're gonna log in as a local user just for something basically if you remember this machine is uh, an image restore from the previous um, uh, experiment so I'm gonna create just a text document here I'm gonna name it um, nothing I'm gonna just leave it there so you know that uh, this machine is different than the Windows 10 machine that we made an image and install it over here so we're gonna um, send the image of this machine up to this server and then create a blank machine and get that uh, um, image restored onto that black uh, blank machine over the network so you see when I turn this machine on it went straight into boot it did not go into pixie boot for that you have to restart it but if I restart it it's gonna go straight to boot again so you have to make some changes you have to go you have to turn it off shut it down uh, basically you're going to bias and you have to shut it down so you shut it down you test you go to its setting and you see legacy network adapter you have to move up and apply but will it boot no because there's no legacy adapter installed right as of yet now for that add hardware and it's a neat trick that you need to know working with the virtual machines that like uh, this one is just network adapter we have to add this one and the oh, default apply to make our machine boot into pixie boot now we click connect start you see it's looking for DHCP server that's this one and it boot into it you have only five seconds to click a key so now uh, this went into pixie boot mod it's saying that you can boot to local machine that was the our windows you can go to clone deploy or client console I don't know what client console is when I played with it it gave me a command prompt like a uh, thing I'm not gonna mess with that in this video I'm gonna just click on clone deploy and it's gonna start loading And you see adding DNS 888 is for Google one for the internet and if you can see basically it's asking me username and password for the um, oh, I did not show you a step over there on the server that was to log into the host um, but I can show you but before if you remember we told the machine to give out address in the range of 194 to 205 so this machine is the first one to ask for an IP address and it got 195 so it is it, it this is within our range over here uh, on the server basically you have to go uh, and configure your um, a clone deploy um, program and for that you just open a web browser and type in this address localhost uh, uh, forward slash clone deploy and you click enter it will ask you for username and password it's always admin and password nope it's admin and the password I think uh, we created okay I'm okay the I always mess this one up. The pa username is clone deploy and password is password. And now you log it in. Uh, now it's asking you to put a new password. We're gonna do it. We're gonna give it a new password here.
and it's asking for the server IP address we know it's this one and we add it in there it's asking for the read only and write password that remember when we were doing it and that <coughs> when we were installing um, the clone deploy it uh, asked us to enter passwords a uh, few times like three times if you remember it uh, I was too fast with that one if you can uh, go back and see it will say read on uh, CD share read and CD share read writer we're gonna enter that password here and we can click on finalize step now we can go to this machine we can enter username that is c l o n e d e p l o y it can ask us for password we can enter the password first time and it's complete now it's asking to name this computer we don't want to name it we can click enter basically it's asking us to either shut down the computer reboot or start on demand task we're gonna go with the third one it's asking you want to deploy it you want to upload the image or multicast we're gonna do with the upload we want this in computer's image be stored up to that server it says new or existing we're gonna go with the new it says enter a name for the uh, this uh, computer's image we know that the is test we're gonna say test image I'm gonna just see one thing I mean I named it now it's gonna do its thing um, it gonna create an image and send it over over the network to that server and save it over there So this is very fast if you see in GB per minute because uh, we are doing in virtual machine this is saving from my uh, within my hardest to hardest and my hardest is basically am.2 um, this uh, m.2 so it's uh, pretty fast it says that it clone the machine but the real time takes within uploading it image upload now it's uh, uploading it if you can see over here you can play with this, all these uh, icons this is the computers none found this is the groups like you can uh, actually it's pr pretty neat you can do a lot of uh, uh, customization configuration over here these are the images if you see test image one it's size this is the size right now on the server because it's being uploaded and it's in process so you can see a little bit of details here and you can see it's uh, uh, um, settings this one is protected that you can pass I think it's you can password protect it or you can protect it that nobody can nobody else can uh, download it except for you and the visible on demand is basically do you want anybody else uh, to see it and what do I mean by anybody else for uh, if you log in and you want to download it you will know hey it's mine uh, but if you uncheck it it will not show up but you you can enter the name if you know the name and you can download it but for anybody else is this one users uh, you see we use this uh, username to um, um, d uh, deploy uh, sorry upload it or we're gonna use the same one to deploy but you can add new users and you know you can give a few others access to this uh, environment and allow them to uh, clone or restore or deploy images so it's pretty cool uh, 
and you see this one is being done here we can if we go back here to the image um, let's there was a status bar somewhere I saw yeah this was the one not in the images but this uh, task so it's showing you 17% about the same but there's a little bit uh, lag here but it's pretty much I think latency issue but it's being done so basically saying device size it's about the 50 GB so I don't know why it's saying 53 it's saying space in use free space I feel like that I should pause the video here it's getting too big uh, too long um, but when I was uh, playing with it like installing it configuring it for the first time I missed uh, the ending so just bear with me I'm gonna I am thinking to capture it all for the sake of what messages appear on this screen and you know you can always go back and see them so if you are here you can always um, forward and get to the point where it's saying 100% here and then you can see what's uh, next up there but uh, uh, the installation downloading and installing onto a blank computer is fast pretty fast While it's doing this, next I try, I trying to uh, use this one um, and play with this one and see if I'm able to do deploy a stage and all that these steps in this thin PC. So I'm going to see if I can play with that one, definitely. Because clone deploy is good, but it has been discontinued. There is no support. If it works good, not, then you, you I don't know what you can do. Uh, so far, it worked for me. That's why I tested it out before making the video, because I wanted to be sure that it does. Uh, like, if it's something like that, I can make the live video. Um, but if it's discontinued, I don't want to make a video if it doesn't work. And then I am going to do this one as well. This one is very popular. I'm seeing it a lot uh, for especially um, 
in businesses so I want to try it out also and make a video for this one you need uh, to have a few things like uh, recovery media it, it says right here but basically you have to have a USB stick and then some kind of uh, it says right here DVD, VD media, ISO image and all that so I'm gonna use a USB stick and a USB uh, external hard disk so we'll see that it's still 54% So you can see here, it was going to take about 14 minutes uh, or change uh, to upload this image. So if you're watching this video, uh, you can basically skip it. At this point, you can skip it another five minutes or so, four minutes. And if you were at the beginning, you and you notice this one you could skip altogether 15 minutes and then get to the point where it's uh, done
since we are playing with rich um, evaluation copies of Windows so we're not bothering about the um, activation but if uh, you want to uh, image a computer and then deploy it to a few others I will suggest do not enter the activation key unless of course you uh, no, that that's irrelevant I was going to say that if you're using the Windows deployment uh, service but that uh, gets the activation automatically done so if you're you okay it's done it's going back to the thing now basically uh, what happened was that um, it will uh, the imaging and uploading is done it rebooted and it was going for the uh, was done so as soon as done it's reboot and it was going to boot into the local machine so you have to click the arrow key uh, with the next uh, five seconds I did that so I'm at this machine I can go and boot to the local machine or I can go to the clone deploy and but I'm gonna boot to the local machine and shut this down because the image has been saved I'm gonna create a blank uh, Connect. and if you see if you go over there the task is complete nothing is active it's done and if we go to the this it's 7.69 it's approved and test image one so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our this machine shut it down we no longer need it the image has been deployed oh sorry uploaded we're gonna create a new virtual machine virtual machine it's the same that we have done it for so many time we're gonna name it test 2 we're gonna give it generation 1 uh, we can give it 2048 I need to change my keyboard this one does not have a light so each time I have to click on not lock connection we get say default for this virtual disk we're going to give it 50 GB and install an operating system later just like that we did with the test uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about you can go and watch that video I apologize this video is too long all right so we're going to run the test too and we're going to boot into pixie and get the installation media from this one but again we have to go to the settings and you see uh, bias it's booting from CD and uh, legacy is here we move up but there's no legacy it says ne network adapter right so we go add hardware again legacy network adapter we add it it's right there so it's not connected we put a default we click OK and now we connect to test 2 and see what happens and it's searching for DHCP it's gonna get its uh, IP address uh, we have to quickly clone you have to act quickly because you only have five seconds otherwise it will boot into that uh, local copy but on this machine it was not going to because there is nothing local and I already turned off the other machine so I think it's gonna get the same IP address no so if you remember the other machine got 195 and if you know a little bit about how DHCP works once they give out the IP address it's valid for uh, some time normally it can be somewhere between nine hours to a whole day basically nine hours I said that where uh, in an environment where the PCs are going on and off and there are multiple users using the same machine like on a floor um, <coughs> DHCP is configured uh, that it will give out this IP address to this user and when that uh, machine is no longer in use uh, shuts down uh, after nine hours the IP address is available to be allocated to somebody else so it's uh, on a very busy environment but uh, since 195 was given to test it's uh, our server gave this 196 we're gonna use the same uh, username that is deploy no it's clone deploy 
and we're gonna give it the password download course scripts and we're gonna say as the register we're gonna skip it it's again shutdown reboot or start we're gonna start uh, in in the uh, we did the upload it's done we're gonna deploy and we're gonna so for example if you had multiple computers all send their images through pixie and they will all have their name here so for example there were 10 we'll select the one that we want the to be deployed into this machine so we know it's uh, right now it's only one we click on it can I manually create I think I could yeah I could just name them and leave it here but that's not for today just search and be done all right so what's happening here it's pretty fast as you see so it basically went ahead um, scanned the, the image on the server now it's gonna uh, download and deploy so if you remember uploading was uh, for like 15 minutes downloading is only downloading and deploying is only about six minutes you know if you don't want to uh, if you're not bored you can just skip ahead six minutes of, on this video and see what's the end looks like uh, at the end of six minutes I'm hoping to boot into Windows uh, and this uh, computer will pick up everything uh, just like it did with the uh, your backup thing it picked up all the using local users and even the domain settings and we were able to log in just fine So as I was saying that uh, when you are deploying the um, an image to multiple machines make sure that uh, um, you don't enter any serial key for any software um, for example Windows or for Office you just install them and leave the um, activation later for later part when you go actually go log into that computer and then you you can run all those software just activate it so basically um, imaging uh, cut shorts of your deployment time uh, you perfect one image and then deploy it and then all you have to do is just activate it and that's uh, just uh, within internet connect internet connection you just enter the serial numbers and everything gets automatically done but uh, if you for example if you activate the windows first and install the um, office and go ahead and click on it and then it gets activated over the internet automatically then we are looking at um, a bit of headache because all of those computers running the same uh, activation or serial keys and they are all conflicting message popping up that this copy of windows or software is uh, uh, not gen one or it's uh, not usable so you have to do a lot of work to fix that so it's better not to enter any serial keys uh, 
until after you have deployed it then it's just you activate yeah, enter it and it gets activated automatically but uh, the for like enterprise where um, the large number of computers for example 100 200 500 computers uh, WDS is a nice tool it's a uh, through the Microsoft uh, you install it on your server I saw it uh, um, on our server right here um, if you see the manage add role and feature and you click server selection server roles you see it somewhere right there oh actually I already installed it I just wanted to see it's Windows deployment services so basically what it does is it deploys the image for you and then a uh, yeah, you have to actually work with Microsoft to get all those uh, uh, keys in. And what it does is that uh, it deploys the image for you and then activates the windows uh, for you as well. so it's almost done and let's see what happens it says clone successfully last line closing active task and it's again looking yeah. looking to go log into pixie boot and this time I'm not gonna hit the key I'm gonna let it boot to um, local machine and you see it uh, the windows has been deployed to it and this is now I'm gonna see uh, if the local account is working see it says welcome does not give me the error message that password is wrong or something so it is working and this is the reason this is the reason that I logged uh, in in the first place and created this uh, uh, file over there because this test was an image deployment of this Windows machine so this was the original win, uh, uh, Windows ev evaluation copy that I installed then I used uh, the Im this image in my um, these videos oh, sorry these videos your backup uh, videos so we use this your backup software to res uh, to backup an image of uh, Windows 10 and deploy it on test so I wanted to make it different than the first one and that's why I created this file and then we just use the test uh, image uploaded it onto the server and then deployed it onto this machine so you see it works let's go and um, check the domain if it connects to the domain and then I will end this video thank you for watching it's uh, it's a super long video I apologize for that so 
let's log into our domain but let's do something else log into a different user see if that works nope all right so it's connected to domain and it is working all right so all good you see it's the enterprise evaluation copy oh already windows license is expired i never saw this message i believe i still have like uh, somewhere around 56 days let's log out of it now it's of course it's hang uh, up come on sign out sign into the local user and see what's saying there is it saying it's expired okay yep it's saying it's expired uh, the only reason that I can think of I'm gonna run the actual uh, let's run the test this was the image the only thing I can think of uh, it's saying expired even though I know that I have at least 50 days uh, no don't do that even though that I know for a fact that I have 50 days I think because we are imaging and Windows is detecting that uh, uh, this software is being copied over so but it's for evaluation and learning purpose uh, I can delete them I'm just keeping them for a, I mentioned in the uh, other video but I'm keeping all these copies only all right so you see these two machine difference it has 68 days so I knew for a fact that I uh, this was a 90 days copy and uh, I just installed it a month ago so I have like 68 days and over here it says expired so basically what's going on is Windows detecting that this software is being copied over and it has a license key even though uh, it's an evaluation copy it has a license that is set to expire uh, after 90 days that's why they count down here so yeah uh, as I was saying that do not copy or deploy this image with the installation um, activation key in make sure that you do not put the activation key deploy it across your five ten devices then go to each machine enter the activation key and then activate them so you don't have to see this message and you know there's limited um, functionality of your computer uh, I'm gonna just test uh, one last thing I'm gonna shut this uh, test machine down and I'm gonna check if I have internet on this newly deployed machine so YouTube no internet it says no internet yeah. no internet access network and internet settings that may that maybe that's because of the I I should not this is okay test done to connect I saw the same uh, globe on the other one
So, ten. All right, that's saying no internet. I'm gonna shut them down and I'm gonna play around with this uh, uh, legacy one and see if it's that's the cause. Uh, thank you for watching and there's no internet on this one either. Even though it has the pet numbers, uh, I'm gonna see uh, what's the fix and I will uh, update. All right, thank you for watching. This was just how to use the pixie boot, nothing else and let's close the down all right thank you for watching and you have a good day